everybody it's brock and today we got a brand new episode of all about hope everyone had a wonderful new year and a happy holidays this is the first video of 2022 and i'm so excited to be bringing something that a lot of people have asked for today we're learning all about the monopora digitata now the one you're going to be seeing in the video is one that most people see in these monoporas this one they call it a forest fire or a fire escape just a bunch of different kinds but what you're mostly seeing is that green lime green body with these nice really bright orange polyps coming out and they also will call these the finger coral prices on them you'll normally spend about thirty dollars to get a frag of one of these care level i would say moderate it ain't too hard to take care of them as long as they're going into a nice reef tank and it's also good for beginners who are wanting to get into sps corals they are a much hardier version of SPS corals. So if you are always taking good care of LPS corals and some of the more simple things and you're wanting to move up into this SPS world, this is a great one to start out with. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. You know, I like my reef right on 78 all throughout the year. My DKH, 8 to 12 will keep them happy and pH 8.1 to 8.4. Salinity, you want to keep it about 1.023 to 1.025. Colors, like I said, they'll have this lime green body with bright orange and red polyps coming out all over him. It is a really eye-catching coral to have, especially when he has a lot of polyps all over him. Diet, so they are photosynthetic, so they're going to be eating off the lights and all that zoanthia in the water. But I would highly recommend spot feeding any kind of SPS coral because they will thrive off of it. Also helps them grow a lot faster, keeps their colors and health up a lot. So spot feeding a couple times a week will really help out. And with spot feeding with these, you really want to be putting some kind of liquid food in the tank, whether you're pouring liquid in the powerheads to just blow all around the tank, or you can actually shut your powerheads off, get a little syringe and squirt it right on top of them. And those polyps will come out and eat it and they love it. And you can leave your power off for, you know, 30 minutes or so, so that he eats it and then crank them powerheads back on to blow it around to the rest of the corals around the tank. Now, oyster feast, you got reef roids, you got a whole bunch of different powders out there you can mix with your water and pour it in there. Any kind like that will really help this guy grow. Origin, so most of the time they're aquaculture nowadays. Anytime you're getting one, it's pretty much from somebody that grew it in their own tank. But originally they did come from the Indo-Pacific area, mainly on that Great Barrier Reef. Venomous, now while they can sting, they usually lose up against any other coral because they just don't have as powerful of a sting. So you definitely want to put them somewhere where he has plenty of room to grow. He can grow beside other monopora, but you definitely don't want to put him something beside like a galaxy coral or an anemone that could attach onto him and sting the fire out of him because you definitely don't want that. Placement is really anywhere. These corals will grow up to the light. That's how their branches begin to extend. So usually we put them up high, that way they have a good open space to grow up. And that also is usually where most of the current is. Now with current, you want to have a medium to high current. Most of the time people put their SPS corals in some really intense current because this helps them feed really well. And it also keeps detritus and hair algae from growing on them. Because once that algae starts to grow on their skin, it is really hard for them to recover from it. So make sure to put them in a nice, really high current spot. That'll help him feed really good and it also keep his skin really healthy. Lighting, I would recommend, you know, a good high lighting. You cannot go and cheap out on lighting when it comes to SPS corals. They require just a much more intense lighting to stay alive in the tank. So a lot of people will use metal halides, T5s, and then really high output LEDs. The one you're seeing in the video is about midday whenever the whites are brightest and they are under two hydro 26s going on them and if you're curious about the levels please let me know down in the comments and i'll list it down there for y'all but for lighting definitely have to have a high intense lighting if you're looking for something like par levels you know 100 and above is what's going to keep a sps coral alive and thriving tank size it doesn't matter it's all about keeping your levels good keeping the good lighting on them and just making sure he has plenty of room around him to grow. Now let's talk about fragging this coral. So it is easy to frag Monty. It isn't super strong that you can't get a pair of scissors down there and clip its branches off. Normally it's pretty good. 
about clipping in certain spots, but I will recommend it's best to cut the larger pieces rather than the smaller as the chance of recovery is just much higher. If you start cutting little bitty tiny pieces of them off, most of the time they just end up bleaching. So make sure you're cutting a good solid piece off so that he can heal and recover fine. So for example, if you see one start to split off making a Y shape, you could go in there and cut the left or right side of that off, glue it to a little frag plug, and let it grow out, and you'll end up just continuing that, and you'll have a ton of Monty frags. Acclimating is also a very important part to keeping SPS corals, as they can be very sensitive to new tanks that could lead to bleaching if it isn't done right. So I'd recommend doubling the acclimation time that you usually do for your fish, and also check your lights to have an acclimation period. A lot of them do have that built in, where he's not being put into just 100% lighting. That way he gradually gets used to it, and then eventually he'll be in your normal day of lighting in the tank. This is just a good way to help him not bleach out as soon as you get him that first month. Now a lot of times you can try to wonder, is my Monty doing good? He's not really growing as fast as I thought he would, or he just doesn't seem like he's that healthy. So most of the time what you need to look for is Monty will want to look for lots of polyps all over the coral. If you look up pictures you can see almost all the time you can barely see the little lime green body on them because they have so many polyps all over them now the one you're seeing is one we just fragged so his polyps were starting to come out again so i definitely wanted to get a shot of them but what you want to look for is all those polyps being out on the coral all over his body you also will notice some little white tips on the edges of them and that's okay it's not bleaching happening that's actually signifying good growth coming out of them now, if you start to see white spots on other parts of the coral, that's when I would be worried. You also notice that polyps are not coming out as often or not for long. It's definitely time to check those water levels. Normally, something just needs a boost, whether it's your KH or your calcium needs to come up. Now, the main ones are calcium, your KH, your iodine, your strontium. All of those are very important in keeping up the level to plan on having a healthy SPS coral. They just have to have that in the tank to survive. So make sure your water looking good. Make sure your levels don't spike on them. Nitrates, nitrites, all of those you want to keep in check all the time because usually whenever spikes happen, SPS corals are usually the first to go just because they are more sensitive to those water levels. And then also just really make sure you're keeping up with your reef levels as well. That way you end up with a really healthy, good growing SPS tank. Now, that's pretty much everything you need to know, just a good high level about taking care of these Poras. If you do have any questions or have some knowledge on taking care of them in your own tank, please leave it below. That's how we learn from everybody, just seeing what their tips and tricks are so that we can all better take care of these corals. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Hope you all all got some resolutions to tackle this year. And y'all always reach out to me if you need any help. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see y'all later. everybody it's brock and today's video is sponsored by dream team forever make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever all about tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series click the link in the description to get some for you and your family